Hi, this is Vicki Gilford Parnell, and I have come to share a dream with you, but um, I'm going to just tell this one. Um, I have been doing a lot of excessive praying, and I'm not going to be able, Lord willing, to have the voice to read it. This is a dream that came forth on December 30th at 4.38 a.m. and then also on 12.31.22 at 1.10 a.m. Today is 1-1 one, one of 23 and it is the, called the Dream of Three Days of Darkness. And the Lord has instructed me to start off with these two verses. Amos, not Amos, I'm sorry, 26 of Isaiah, Isaiah 26, verse 20 and 21. Verse 20, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself as if it were a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth, for their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. Before we start, I'd like to pray. And I said all of you would pray with me. And I'm praying and come in agreement that eyes and ears will be open. That the Lord's truth, Jesus' truth, will come forth. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. John 14.6 no man cometh unto the Father but by him. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Lord, and I invite your Holy Spirit into this video recording, into my life. Holy Spirit, my friend, I ask that you would lead and guide each word that needs to be spoken of this dream. I ask that you would anoint it and you would send it out, because Father's God's word does not return unto him void. It goes out. And accomplishes all that he calls it to do. As Isaiah 55, 17 tells us. And 55, 11. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord. Again, I come against any plot, gin, snare, device, scheme, arrow. Any kind of device. Any kind of command, spoken or unspoken. That would try to come against me, this ministry, my family, all I love. Father God, you said that we are to be fruit watchers. And Lord, I know, I know, Father, that this ministry is prospering. And it is only by your presence and your leading and your guiding. So Father, in the name of Jesus, every spirit that will be behind any attack, any of these things, any witchcraft, any sorcery, I bind it right now. I loose it off of any person, anything, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I bind it. I wrap it in everlasting chains, according to Jude 1, 6. And I command it to stay there bound till the day of judgment. And I take my sword of the Spirit. And I chop this, these demons, these spirits and entities up in the name of Jesus. They've come to kill, steal, and destroy. And this is war. We're on a battlefield for lost souls. It's no time to play. It's no time to sit down. And if you're not praying without ceasing, as the Bible says, then you're being disobedient. Father, I choose not to be disobedient. And I know that praying without ceasing can mean you can pray while you work. You can pray before you go to bed. You can have your regular prayer time. In everything you do, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him. Pray, seek Him, in all that ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. He will direct your steps. He will lead you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your steps. He will direct that path. What more could we want? So in the name of Jesus, I take these bound entities and demons Father God, where would you like me to place them right now? To be held to the day of judgment. 
Again, I place them on every satanic altar. They're mutilated pieces that's been in the past, in the present, or in the future. So that when these people get down to pray, they see these demons or feel these demons. And they will know there is a God in heaven who sits on the throne that rules and reigns in righteousness and has more power than their little their little S's, their little demigods, their little wannabes. In Jesus' name. Now, Father God, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, blessings upon them. And, Lord, I pray that you would stir their hearts. And if they're not right, that the convicting power of the Holy Spirit would go out. Lord, time is short. These things are coming. These things, Lord, war, famine, pestilences, tribulation, antichrist rise. These things are here. The Father God, in the name of Jesus, prepare us. Prepare us, Lord. Keep us on our knees. Lord, keep us in your word, keep us fasting, keep us singing, keep us worshiping, Lord, and keep us, Lord, you know, your your word says, let the worshipers arise in spirit and in truth. Lord, we can have the word, but if we don't have the Holy Spirit, if we don't have that balance, then we don't have all of you. And something's going to go away. It's going to go, it's going to become erroneous, Lord. So, Father God, help us to do both. We have to worship you in spirit. We sing, we praise, we worship, Lord. So, Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, every place that's been vacated by any kind of demonic force, that your Holy Spirit would fill it, that your blood would be applied to it. Your blood is precious, and I thank you for every drop you've shed, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray let your perfect will be done on earth as it is in heaven in all things so that you can be glorified you father not me not anyone else in jesus name amen <coughs> i apologize i said i knew a lot of praying thank you lord for the water okay i've had this same dream twice it's the same dream same length nothing's changed it's just the same and it's another dream about the three days of darkness <coughs> I rebuke you devil no weapon formed against me shall prosper you will leave in Jesus name now Holy Spirit I trust you to let me be able to say what needs to be said in the first first dream I had of uh, three days of darkness the Lord revealed to me and showed me that in the darkness the Nephilim would be returning from off planet, from bound in places. Well, this dream goes into more details because I don't talk about it much because I've been seeking the Lord. And about the last two weeks, I've been hearing grid going down and I've been hearing three days of darkness. So I set my face before the Lord and I've been seeking Him. Because I've read a few things. I don't read much. and I've, But I have friends that's had visions and, and dreams. And the Lord has talked to them that I trust. I have praying people that I trust. And so with that, I, I had this dream. And it starts out, I'm in a field. And I was out walking in the field, um, praying. Um, praying for Putin and praying for Xi Jinping. Because I know they're coming, but they still, I'm praying they still get saved. And all of a sudden, it's dark, it's dark outside. I start seeing, like, this beautiful green color in the sky. Now, I live in Tennessee, and I was in Tennessee. We have no northern lights here. And this is one thing I was asking the Lord to confirm, yes or no, for me. And then I started seeing, like, light pink, and then the, the, the brilliant colors and cyan blue, and they were in, like, patterns in the sky. And in the dream, I, 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 I asked the Lord, I said, Jesus, is this the Northern Lights? Because this is Tennessee. And I said, is this the sign before the three days of darkness? And and he said, yes. And uh, um, I said, well, Lord, it's not time for the three days of darkness. <laughs> and apparently it was. But to make a long story short, in the three days of darkness, he told me that, yes, there would be um, auroras or northern lights or whatever you want to call them and they would be worldwide they're going to, going to catch the eye of all people 
but that is our sign the Christian sign to get home now I'm not one for fear mongering I'm just going to tell you what the dream was okay after seeing the lights all of a sudden the scene changed and when it changed I went into like the darkness and it was only for like a minute or two but it was a, it was horrible I mean I, I, I was I could barely breathe it felt smothering but it felt like it was touching and crawling and and it felt evil and it felt cold and it felt it was just horrible and it was like tormenting my mind and it was just for a few moments and then Jesus was there and we were in like a bubble and his light was shining and um, he told me it was necessary just for that brief moment about because the outer darkness just told me it's the darkness outer darkness in hell and that's what the three days of darkness is it's alive somehow it's alive and um, he told me that way I could pray better for people so I've been praying a lot it was horrible it's not something you want anybody to experience but I was asking him I said Lord well what please please clarify to me in this dream I was discussing you know, please clarify these things because you said if you ask you shall receive and you have not because you have because you ask not and I said well, what I know the Nephilim are coming in there and I know that demons are being released and fallen angels that are bound and I said but I've heard so much I've heard you need to tape up the windows I've heard that if you're outside you know you're not to be outside and he said no if you're outside because as in the days of Goshen in Exodus 10 um, when the darkness falls you're to be inside because it is the demons time at that point to come out if you're caught outside I saw people ripped to pieces ripped to pieces that were caught outside but then I also saw people that I knew were Nephilim meaning more they had more demon blood in them or DNA than than human and I'm not going to go into that that's something I did a search when I was first Lord first brought them to my attention started looking at the Greek word for the fallen ones and matched them up with the passages I knew were angels the good angels and then the fallen ones and they match so I believe it I believe they are the offspring the Nephilim are offspring of demons and people because that's what the Lord showed me and then he gave me several dreams on that but in this he also showed me that um, for example like like if you are a child of God and you're in a a vehicle or something get caught in the vehicle you don't open that door but you're safe as long as you don't give in to fear now if you're um, a sold out on fire child of God you have nothing to worry about if you're lukewarm you're gonna need to do some heavy praying but then um, he was as he was taking me through um, I started noticing I saw houses that had you could tell it was like candlelight and um, I was questioning the Lord because then I could also see houses that had like electricity and I'm like and then the most of them were you know a lot of them were just black no lights no nothing and I said Lord what why did these have electricity you know and he said these are my warrior children these are my chosen I said what, what do you mean by that because you're no respect a person he said you're right I'm no respect a person these are the ones prepared and ready for my return with no spot or no blemish he said these are the wise wise virgins and he said but the others they're still my children but they're spotted and they're dirty he said and they're unprepared they're the foolish virgins he said so I'm not being you know unfair they're reaping their just rewards you reap what you sow and he said they're both being provided light you know they're both being taken care of but the ones with the candles are getting what you know the reward for what they sowed and the ones that have the electricity are getting their good reward so your actions everything you do has a reaction it's like rippling effects so if you're living a godly life and I mean a godly life by Jesus' standards 
and you have the fruit that show you are, try the fruit. You know, it, it, does a person have qualities of Jesus? Are they hateful? Um, are they loving? If they're loving and full of compassion, if they're joyful, I mean, even when you're sorry, I mean, even when you're heavy, I mean, I have some heavy things that come through, but it never takes my joy. Because Jesus is my joy and my strength. But be a be a fruit watcher. And and I don't know why I'm getting off this, but I feel like I need to. I was telling um, one of our younger ladies, a dear friend of mine, I call her Hun. <laughs> I'm from the South. I can do that. <laughs> but um, I was telling her, I said, you watch the fruit. Because you don't know everybody you meet, but you can watch their fruit. Are, are they showing the attributes of Jesus? Are they loving? Are they compassionate? Um, if they are having to um, rebuke or reprove, are they doing it in a loving manner? Even when they're stern, um, you know, watch the fruit. Watch the fruit. Um, for example, is their ministry prospering um, in a good way? You know, and I'm going to use um, our YouTube channel for example. I don't even look at the likes. I don't look at the. Um, I don't even know how many followers we have. I don't even know um, how many views unless somebody tells me. Because my concern is getting out what the Lord tells me to. And let Him take it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not here for people to like me or to love me. In fact, the Lord told me that many people would, would hate me. But I'm here to do what the Lord tells me. I'm here to speak his words um, as a daughter simply a daughter of God <coughs> I'll be a cute devil I don't claim to be anything but a daughter of the most high God and so at times I do have to shake myself off straighten up my crown and remember to who I belong to Jesus Christ my Savior my lovely Jesus all right, back to the dream. So as I'm looking in there, I see that these people that um, have electricity, they still have, um, some of them have their windows taped up. It looks like taped up. And I did get to see inside, and there were saved and unsaved people in there. But in the dream, there were no demons trying to get in or, or, or call out or anything. And when I question the Lord, he says, it's because they know there's at least one true warrior of God who knows how to send them flying, you know, cast them away, send them away. He said, they're going to focus on those with the candlelight and those in the dark. And I asked the Lord, well, why are these, why do they still have to have the, you know, the, the windows taped up? He said, because of the unsaved people. If they were to look out, or, or even if a weaker Christian there, if they looked out, a lot of them cannot mentally withstand what they would see. Because they would, the demons would show themselves, even in the darkness. And it would drive them mad, at least some of them. That's what I saw. So with that, you know, I understood. And, and I said they had the ability to use their electricity and... um everybody inside was safe but the lord did say focus on me you know it's you need to be praying and reading and, and seeking the lord because it's a horrible time for those that are not ready and it is a time this is a time of mercy it is a time for repentance a time for repentance so if you're in a home that has electricity but you have people unsaved it is your time to reach those and if you love them you're not going to care what they say and believe me even though you have electricity you're still going to feel that presence of evil around you but you're going to be safe nothing to fear nothing to fear because Jesus is right there with you he'll cover you in his blood and he'll put angels around you now as for the ones with the um, 
the ones with the candlelight when I was looking in it um, they not all of them had the um, I apologize that's my son <laughs> I'm praying for him um, sorry about that I, I thought he was sleeping he works late anyway sorry about that so when I went to the candlelight, because I, I could tell the flickering of the candles and all, even though it, I, I can't explain it, even though the, some of them had the plastic up and all, I could still see. I just knew they had candles in them. And when he took me inside there, they did not have the ability to use their water. They did not have the, the stove, the electricity. They had the candlelight. But while I was there, you could hear the demons trying to entice them to open the door. And um, those unsaved with them, these are those that are not firm in their faith. That have a loud compromise. That have um, bitterness, unforgiveness in their life. Any, any sin. Any sin. And, you know, we're only made righteous through Jesus' righteousness, his robe of righteousness. But with this, um, it started again with the Aurora. It was only a few, one, maybe two hours. And I had asked him, I said, Lord, but I've heard some people say two days. And he said, well, two days... And a few hours is both right. And I said, well, Lord, please explain that to me. And he said the, the time is going to be distributed all over the world. That equals 48 hours. So the roars may be, you know, coming in some places, shorter periods of time. And I said, well, give me an example in your word. Because everything has to line up with your word. I said, because I know, yes, both those appear to be true. I mean, if you say it, it's true, Lord, you know. But he gave me the example of um, King Zedekiah. Jeremiah had given a prophecy that um, he would see the king of Babylon face to face and would be carried away to Babylon. And then Ezekiel had given prophecy that um, he would be captured but would never see Babylon. And they both turned out true because Jeremiah records that he saw the king uh, the king in Babylon face to face Zedekiah did he saw them murder his children his sons and they put his eyes out so he was carried to Babylon but never got to see it both prophecies were true though they sounded like they contradicted each other so that's why you can't just take the obvious you have to never just assume God is multi-layered God is multi-layered And I do have other verses the Lord gave me. And I do have those already written down. Um, because I do have it written down. But I'm not going to be able to, to give all the details. I'll try, Lord will, on a later date. The other verses, Amos 8, 9. Deuteronomy 3, 16. And then we read Isaiah 26, 20 through 21. Exodus 21 through 23. Job 3, 6 through 9. Job 5, 14, Isaiah 13, 6 through 11. Again, this is the dream of the three days of darkness. I also saw, I saw hope coming too in that dream. I saw Jesus returning. Um, and I don't know, you know, if there's space between them. I don't know. Um, because I've had dreams before where before the first weapon from the sky hits, Jesus returns. And I always thought it meant, well, right in the middle of the stage of it. I don't know now because of this dream. So with that being said, <laughs> here's my son again. <laughs> With that being said, um, 
Lord willing, I will try to get this, you know, this when, when um, I can, the whole thing out, Lord willing. If not, this is a basic dream. I have never followed people uh, about the three days of darkness. I have laid it before the Lord like I did with the Nephilim, the, the, the giants. <clears throat> I know there's been giants, but the giants that are half half fallen angels, you know, have their offspring half fallen angels and human. I always just laid it on the shelf till the Lord decided to talk to me. He gave me a dream called The Delusion Has Begun, and from that time on, he's been revealing a lot of things. But he's faithful and he's good. So with this being said, I'm asking you all to pray and seek the Lord. Lay this before the Lord. There are other scriptures in here. Um, Amos 8, 9 though. It's very, very, uh, very, very clear. I'll go ahead and read that one right quick. I thank you for taking your time. I knew I was going to be reading this, so I had it ready. Well, whatever you want, Lord. <clears throat> Amos 8, 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And there's other, I mean, everything, everything, everything. And I know that some people can say, well, what, what happened to the plagues? This is one of the plagues. It is. But also, um, as far as the plagues coming before, they have been moved back by prayer. Um, sorry, I meant my page. But they're still coming, and in Revelation, it talks about the two witnesses, and it tells us that they will have all the plagues. All the plagues in this book are coming. They'll have the power to pull it all down. I mean, to call it at any time. I'm sorry, this it's if I know I was going to do this. I would have had it marked. <laughs> Chapter 11. Okay. Verse 5. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of the prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them into blood, to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And um, for those of you that are very staunch and says, well, it happened. God said this has got to happen this way. God has a right to have a heart change. And I say a heart change because he don't change his mind. When he gives a judgment, you know, judgment, when judgment has been sent and judgment has been sent down, judgment is coming. But he can change it. He can change the circumstances. We see that when he talk, told um, Abraham, and I don't have these looked up, you can look them up. When he, he came and talked to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot, that he was going to destroy it. And Abraham said, perhaps if you find 50 people, will you not? Yes, if I find 50, and perhaps 40, and just went on down. So the Lord had to, you know, finally at the end said, if you had find 10, I think it was 10, um, then he would spare it. And then we have where um, Moses, God was going to destroy all the children of Israel and make a nation out of Moses. That's what he told Moses he was going to do. And Moses interceded for the children of Israel and said, well, if you're, you're going to kill them, my words, I'm just rephrasing, if you're going to kill them, then kill me, blot my name out of the book too. And the Lord repented, had a change of heart. And also in Amos 7, Again, the Lord tells Amos, talks with Amos, and says, I'm going to send grasshoppers and fire, two different, you know, those two. And he repented. And in the end, he said, captivity. And they went into captivity. 
Um, then you have King Hezekiah. Isaiah came to him, word of the Lord, get your house in order. This sickness is unto death. You're going to die. And Isaiah starts leaving. Hezekiah turns his face to the, the wall and prays out to the Lord. Isaiah makes it out to the courtyard, the prophet Isaiah, and the Lord says, go back and tell him he gets 15 more years. And put a fig on him, and, and a fig leaf, I think is what it is. And he'll be healed. The Lord repented. Had a change of heart. But we need to always pray, is that your perfect will, Lord? Because out of those additional 15 years, when the Lord's perfect will was for him to, Hezekiah to die, to go to heaven with him, came uh, Manassas, which was known for the, the king who caused Israel and Judah to be divided to sin. Then there's Ahab. Uh, Lord had Elijah come to Ahab, give him judgment. You know, you're going to die for what you did to, um, what was it, Naboth, Naboth, Nabor, Naboth, I think it's Naboth, his vineyard, uh, he wanted the vineyard, and Naboth, because it was his heritage, would not sell it. Jezebel arranged for false accusation, and he was stoned. And so, God passed judgment on him, and it was not a good judgment. And he went and wept, and the Lord, Lord came back to Elijah and said, "See how he turned, how he, re, he he mourned. See how he repents. He went in sackcloth." And so he, being a God of love, even though Ahab was wicked, he repented, had a change of heart, and had him tell him, "This will not come upon you, but your son, your your line. It will." not come during your lifetime so we have to remember you know we're made in the likeness of God does that mean his words not his words not true no judgment is still coming the judgment is still coming like with Nineveh Nineveh Jonah comes in there and says not if you do the if you repent he goes in, he says, 40 days and this, this place is going to be destroyed. 40 days. And this place is going to be destroyed. Again, these are my words. And they repented. Did that stop the judgment? It pushed it back. I think it's like either, I think it's two or four hundred years later. Nineveh gets destroyed. Judgment still came. And then there's prophecies like um, unconditional prophecies, which means there's nothing man can do that's going to change them. There's nothing demons can do, devil can do to change them. They're, as we call, set in stone. Jesus will be born as a virgin, unconditional. Jesus will come to this world as a man and God, unconditional. Jesus will die on the cross, unconditional. Antichrist will rise, unconditional. Jesus will defeat him at the valley of Megiddo in the battle of Armageddon. Unconditional. You know, unconditional set in stone prophecies. Alright, didn't mean to go through all that, but I did. <laughs> so praise the Lord. No matter what happens, God's got you. You stay faithful to Him. No matter if it's your family coming against you. You put Jesus first. No matter what anybody says. You know. And Jesus knows. What your relationship is toward one another. It doesn't matter what people say about you. And don't. Let it roll off your back. Like water going down a, a duck's back. Because in the end, you give an account for every word you speak, and I give an account for every word I speak. And on Judgment Day, how we react to people is part of what we're judged to. You're supposed to love your enemies. 
pray for them and it reaps coals of fire upon their head. We're supposed to be merciful. If somebody hits you, turn the other cheek. You know, if, if someone asks for a coat, give, give them, you know, give them your coat, give them both. They ask you to go one mile, go with them too. You're supposed to be showing the love of Jesus. Again, I'm going to just caution everybody. Watch the fruit. And if you see somebody without the characteristics of Jesus, and you feel think they may be right, but you're not sure, or, or you don't have peace in your spirit, seek the Lord, lay it before the Lord. Lay it before the Lord, and He is faithful, and He will lead you to whatever you need to do. Me, I've had to distance from myself from a lot of people, but I keep myself. I do have some friends that that I pray with. Most of them are not here, but in all things, God is good. Stay under the blood. No matter what happens, God's got us, and each day brings us closer to His return. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I am up for that any moment. As when I talk to Him, He says, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And the visions I see, He's got His foot, one foot already on the, the entranceway to heaven to step out. He's ready. And I see the angels already have the trumpets to the lips, the, the, the and they're ready. All of heaven is ready. I've seen the marriage feast. It's ready. He's just waiting on one little command from Father God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Or when you think of Jesus coming, do you start getting fearful? My family's not saved. Um, uh, am I ready? You don't have time to check on that when he comes. A blink of an eye, twinkling of an eye. All right, I'm rambling. I'm known to ramble sometimes. I apologize. God bless. Stay under the blood. And just trust Him. Trust Him. And line this up with Him. Take it to Him. Don't take my word. Take it to Jesus. Take everything to Jesus. God bless. From Tennessee. Bye-bye.